What's up everyone? This isn't gonna be another line video like you hear all the rest of, of how to tie this knot and how to use this line. I kind of always try to go through the BS, right? This video about line, I'm saying all this because I, I'm actually using a pretty good product. For you guys that really know me, y'all know I've been doing this my whole life. Uh, I was not this guy that was given a bunch of stuff. So I, like everything mattered, like losing a fish, breaking off, in a, off on a fish. It wasn't like I could go fish a tournament for the next weekend, you know, another Bassmaster Elite event, right? And win 10 grand or win a hundred grand. Like, I mean, I was trying to win $500 here, $500 there, a thousand dollars. I'm still in am, right? I fish, I was fishing 45, 50 tournaments a year. I'm gonna throw what I think's good. Like I'm not gonna do, I didn't look at sponsors that way. I didn't look at sponsors as going, hey, they would pay me this amount of money. One, I wasn't getting that. And two, even free product didn't matter to me because this is the way I looked at free product. Free product was great, right? Was it? Um, if I thought I could go win a tournament, and, and at times we were winning you know, quite a few tournaments a year, or, or getting checks in about 70% of them, if, if I could make $1,000 a weekend, right i i wasn't gonna get a thousand dollars a weekend from from a fishing line company or hooks or even baits or any of that stuff right that's that was almost impossible to get at where i was at so i always just used what i thought was the best because if i thought it was the best like i was like man i'll make the money up in tournaments not in sponsorships i've always felt that way and so i've just taken that mentality forever and if i didn't believe in sunline I wouldn't be using them. Like I would go get something else, but at the end of the day, I'll make more money from fishing than I will from sunlight, right? And, or product or any of that stuff. Like I don't care. Like there's a lot of money to be made in the actual tournaments. So I'm not using some like cheap, cheap line that is gonna break anyways. Like comparable line, go get you some really good fishing line. Like I said, there's a reason if you look at all the guys that are using sunline, um, all those guys' lives depend on it, right? So we're not gonna use something that we don't believe in. Doesn't, they, they can't pay you enough to use something that's inferior, right? There's a reason why certain guys go to certain products, like the main guys, like the big guys, right? The Gerald Swindles, right? Um, the, you know, freaking really good dude, Aaron Martins, Sunline, right? The Todd Faircloths, um, the David Mullins. I, I can go on and on about the guys that use sunlight. There's a reason those good companies rise to the top because they have good product. I thought I'd throw that in there to give you all a little understanding of, you know, you can be like, hey, are you sponsored by them? Or I, gotta, I gotta fish with something, guys. I chose sunlight. It just so happened that my relationship grew with them. I was already using their product before I ever was with them. So. It was a win-win for me. It's the same thing with owner hooks. It's the same thing with like striking. I mean, I was always using a lot of their baits. It just so happened, you know, to get paired up with them because maybe I was already using their baits. I believed in the product before I was with them. So anyways, always remember that. I'm not gonna give you 42 knots that you need to know and you need to tie. And this one works 0.1% better than this one and, and all this different stuff, okay? I literally have been getting by with basically one knot my entire life, okay? And I think you can too. Now, I do know some other ones. Um, I think you really only need really just two. I know there's a lot of different thoughts on there about knots and stuff. From my personal experience, yes, there are knots that are stronger, okay? And they've done testing on this. Sunline, right, who, who, I just love and I love their line and I love the things about them and I love what they've tried to go and do. They've really gone out there and done the best research they can, right? So, so I'm gonna trust in them that they've gone out there and done everything they possibly can do to figure out which knot is best, right? And they've done that, okay? Like which knot is best with fluorocarbon and braid and all that stuff. I'll show you the research they've done. I've got it all right here, okay? So here it is.
now that you've seen it, it's not wrong. It's just, here's my point of view from knots and line and everything else, okay? So here we go. This is what I think is more important. Like you might have the best knot out there, right? And you might tie it. I rarely break off from my knot. I usually break off from more of line stuff, right? From nicks in my line, fishing around rock, old line, things like that. So it's if I break off, it's never around my knot. It's usually something that has to do with line, like line maintenance, um, like I said, nicking it, things like that. It's usually not my knot. So that's why I personally don't care about what knot is that much stronger. I, one, I rarely break off because I, I, I pay attention to things. I, I do break off. The one thing I break off for is I break off when I fish certain lakes, lakes that I'm not used to. So I can stay on Rayburn in places without a lot of rock and rarely do I ever break off, almost never, because I, I'm not nicking my line. It's when I start dragging things, like dragging a jig, dragging baits on really, really rocky um, places that I just don't retie as much because I forget to, because I'm not accustomed to doing it, right? So I have to constantly tell myself um, to retie uh, when I get to those places, right? If I'm flipping boat docks and stuff, a lot of the boat docks we fish on certain lakes or where I grew up, there were lakes that it didn't fluctuate. So their docks were, they weren't floating docks. When I'm fishing more floating docks, like when I get around Grand and places like that, um, they, they move up and down and you're flipping inside stalls and things so your line's always going over things. That's when I tend to break off more and I just have to tend to retie more. I'm also a guy who goes heavier on their line than most people. I think that is highly overrated on a lot of things, okay? Not everything. I do line not necessarily on what they can see more or less on what for the bait itself like movement and things like that like how it's going to work uh, when i throw a raid swimmer on a quadrant head i'm not really throwing it because i'm worried about them seeing it i'm throwing it because i want lighter line to get it down there so i can reel it faster things like that uh, but not necessarily because i'm worried about them seeing it let's cut to the chase i throw one knot right it's a polymer knot okay this is where i think is more important Here's 20 pound shooter. Throw all my hybrid hunters on 20 because you can get away with it. I'm not trying to get maximum depth out of it. I'm usually fishing under around cover, usually thick cover, and the way they bite, I usually like to bow them up pretty hard because it's not normal, like a crankbait. Here's what I think is most important. This is where I think people get wrong. You can have the best knot in the world, right? And if you don't tie it right, it's not the best knot. And that's where I think most people mess up. The only way to get good at tying knots is to tie a bunch of knots, okay? So, and understand them, right? Understand what the knot is actually good for. Now, when they show diagrams, it, it shows it very easy that your lines don't cross, right? So you don't have a different twist in there like that. A lot of people just take that for granted. I'm usually, pretty good at just doing it right the first time, right? And if you've done them so much, right? There's my polymer knot. The, I can show you, basically you have to figure out how to do it and you're, everyone's different on how they do it. And what I mean by that is like how your fingers process this whole information, right? And how your head does it because there's a way to do it. And once you figure it out, your, your mind just, your fingers just take over, right? My brain kind of goes away from it. So I know this is, if you look at it, everything is going to slide in, into place. So I wet it. And as it goes, you can watch everything goes perfect into place. So I've got the perfect knot. There's no overlapping. Everything's straight. There's no crossing, right? So I'm not worried. This is 20 pound line, right? I can break 20 pound line, but look where it broke, right? It, it broke on, not the knot, it broke on the line. Now, you say this is a negative against the line. No, it's not a good negative against the line. Give me any line, I can break it. No matter what you give me, anybody's line, I can sit there and I can break it, especially when you snap it like that. There, there's gonna be so many people that sit there and look at this and go, oh, that, that line snap. Like I said, I can go get any line and do the same thing. 
and break it. But what I'm showing you all is rarely is it the knot. If you tie a good knot, it's not going to matter. Now, the reason I can do that is because of the snapping part of it, right? So I'm going to do it once again, tie another knot. Y'all can see I do it all the same. Okay. Now, if I pull on this, right? Right? I can still break it. Still didn't break at the knot. Okay? I, I can do this all day long. Because no matter what you give me, that's more than 20 pounds of pressure, right? I don't want to cut my hands. Right? I can still break it. But it's not breaking at the knot. That's what I'm not worried about. Now, like I said, you can do the same thing with braid. I bet y'all didn't realize this. Now, if y'all know, hold on just a second. Now, I have literally never broke 60 pound braid before, and I'm not gonna try. It's impossible, okay? I'm not gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna pull on it. I will not break it. I'm, I'm not strong enough to. What I will say is this though. You can do this. And it's amazing, right? Watch this. Watch how easy this is to break, okay? It's amazing what happens when you use that popping force to do that, right? To break line, okay? It, it's, it's why line breaks. Now, what you can't do almost impossible I know I'm not gonna be able to I'll try maybe if I get really close <clears throat> I, I can't break it just pulling on it <laughs> so if y'all don't think I'm not pulling hard yeah there's indentions on my fingers from where I just tried to pull it as hard as I possibly can now if y'all think like I said there's gonna be people on here that look at this and go whatever I urge y'all go out there get your fishing line you'll see how you can do it the braid one's crazy that you can pop it and it'll break it took me a couple times but usually you can do it that that's probably gonna start yeah like I said got me um, so with that being said the knot if you notice is holding up it's, it's holding up with all that. Usually something else breaks. Now, I will show you this. Watch this. I'm sure I've got some rock reels in here. No telling how old this line is right here. Old line, to me, is going to fail way quicker than new line. Like line. I don't know. This line's probably been on there a year or two. I have no idea how old that reel is. And so when I tie it, and I can just tell just by the way, see how it right it's probably gonna break pretty easy like still didn't break at the knot that's my point that's old old line right new line won't do that like new line I have to like really really snap it hard okay so there's all these factors that go into it and knots just aren't one of them like knots aren't a big deal to me like I can throw do the Palomar knot just about on everything now there's gonna be guys on here it always will happen you're gonna tell me they tie this knot for a top water to get a loop to get more action man i, I don't know about y'all i i can work a sexy dog and make it go as freaking wild and as hard walking the dog as i ever possibly can so i don't know what to tell y'all about that guys i'm just telling you the polymer knot pretty much does it for me everywhere we go the only the only thing i i will say is this i had to get better right at tying this knot the braid to fluorocarbon right if you're gonna fish spinning rod reels and stuff like that oh my gosh what happened here this knot is the only other thing i think you need to throw up are they better it's better if you tie them right guys that's it if you tie them right then yes maybe they're better but if you're tying a stronger knot not as good 
like if you're not doing a good job, they're all going to work to where I think they're not stronger than the actual line. I think there's always going to be places in line that breaks before you're not, especially the more, like maybe not in the first 10 minutes of you using it, but after casts and casts and catching fish or doing, chances are there's going to be things in your line that are weaker than the knot. Now, once again, this knot is based on how good I tie it, right? And this knot for me a lot of times was not that great. And I had to continually just, just tie it over and over and over and over again until my fingers and my hands became to where I didn't really have to think about it other than the counting. I, I do eight. And then understanding what the knot's trying to do, okay? Two, three. It's like I use these two fingers to hold the line. Um, I, I just, that's what, that's how my hands figured it out. I learned to come back on this a little bit. I go in one way, out the other way. And basically when I, when it all starts to happen, it came together pretty smooth. Now, what I've learned is over doing this, I just took some time and tried to figure out how to make this as pretty as possible because you can tell when this knot's good is how pretty it is okay and i learned which ones to which ones to pull usually i'll pull the braided side not the other in the sense of not that tagline not yet and usually at the very end you can pull that and that now if you can see that's clean okay I mean that is 8 pound 12 pound test line and I can pull on that pretty hard with it with this knot I've noticed if you tie it wrong when you pull on it like that if it's wrong it's gonna break okay and so once again the knots good right is there one stronger maybe maybe done while they're testing things maybe it is if i tie mine really really well man the knots always hold up like i said it's usually me not retying you know me using this for a couple days it's eight pound test line i mean you don't need much of a nick to break eight pound test line so that's going to hold up probably better than anything the reason i'm making this video is i think too many people overthink all this stuff right they put so much emphasis on things that I really don't think they should, right? Um, they're worried about this knot or that knot. Man, keep, listen, fishing's for the most part, it's getting more and more complicated. So let's try to keep some things simple, right? Um, I think you can get by with just those two knots. Like literally, I think you can use the polymer knot for just about anything, for everything. I mean, every single, I'm going tomorrow. I got a tournament tomorrow. Every single rod I have has a polymer knot tied on. I will not break off. I, I try to show you all the things on the water all the time, right? I show you all those videos. I'm not showing you a bunch of break offs. I don't have those. I don't have a bunch of missed fish or break offs or things like that. I kind of got that down. So I just wanted to, wanted to give you all a different point of view because I know I haven't done a knot video and I've had some people thank me for that because I'm not sitting there telling them what not to throw and you got to do this. Bad line, very, very old line, right? Line that gets used a lot. You can still use older line, but you know, if you're throwing a jig out there and working it back slowly, probably only making, you know, a certain number of casts. When I'm throwing a red eye, uh, a crankbait, um, hybrid hunter, spinnerbait, swim jig, I mean, number of things. I mean, I'm making, I'm making five times more cast a day than the other. So that line is going to wear out quicker. I, I also noticed a couple things. Um, when you're throwing certain baits, some of them twist in the air. You get those twists in, in your line, that for whatever reason, I, mean, I see that weakened line quicker than anything, right? Or those twists, especially when you get it the, that um, the next day and you're going to retie, right? You, or you, you pull on it and it breaks and you got that you got that, sw that that different deal. When I broke that line earlier, like see this, this is old line. See that line? See how it looks like that? 
if you break regular line, right? This is the line I broke earlier. You see that? See how there's not that that line? You can tell older line, right? It's all crinkled up all the way down as opposed to just one little deal. That's brand new line, right? It's gonna be harder to break. I could probably do this without even trying. Right? And see, see how it'll, look at that. You see all that? Same deal. That's just really, really old line. That's it. That line's probably been on there over a year. I take anything from that, that bin and use, I'm restringing new line on there. But for right now, I leave them as they are. Now, I'm not one of those guys. I'm not telling you to go sit there and put new line on. I'm not Brian Thrift, okay? I've, I've run with Brian Thrift. He restrings line. If he made 10 casts with a, a rod and reel that day, he's restringing it for the next day. I'm not doing that. I don't do that. I just check the integrity of the line. I usually can look at it, feel it. It's usually really, really smooth. This, you can just tell. It's, it's just... There's just a feeling to it. I can feel it. It's a little bit rougher. It's, it, it, there's a little grit to it. Um, new line, man, that new line just feels so smooth. Stuff's not gonna usually break. So just, just keep that in mind when, if you're worried about these knots or you're worried about stuff. I, I think line is very, very crucial, but things like sun line, as long as I've got fairly new line on there, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. So that's my first ever knot video. Probably gonna be my last one. I think if you uh, figure out a good knot and you're good at tying it, make. I'd rather you be good at tying whatever knot you want to, right, than picking a knot that someone they say is stronger. If you're really good at tying a knot and you don't have any issues, keep tying that knot. Keep doing that same one. You'll be good. You'll be good. All right now, I gotta clean everything up. I had everything clean. Now I gotta go. Gotta get. All right. See y'all.